Hello everyone, Lily here. Since Jingliu is right around the corner, it's time to dive deeper into her kit. It's something I've been doing on this channel. Even though the character isn't released yet, we've got enough information through dreams. Using that information, I do something many people call theory crafting. Well, actually, I'm just analyzing their potential performance using the tools I have such as Damage Calculator or Action Order Simulator because I'm curious myself. And then I shared my conclusion with you guys without revealing the numbers to avoid Hoyo vs. Thorhammer. The videos were sometimes called One Minute Tutorial, sometimes called How I Would Build Something. I didn't think of a proper title yet for this series, but now I think I've got one. Since the theory crafting is based on dreams, I'm gonna call it Dream Crafting. So I hereby present to you the first episode of Dream Crafting. Speaking of Jingliu, I want to start by answering some potential issues stated by other players who also dream about her. First is energy issue. Jingliu's meter requires 140 energy to max. When calculating her energy generation, players find that there is a point where her meter is 5 energy short from maximum. Waiting for her next turn just for this 5 energy is of course not ideal. Hence, they call it an issue or a brick. But is it though? If you look closely to reach 135 meter the first time, she needs two turns. And for the second time, she needs five turns. What are the odds that within two or five turns, she won't get hit or kill a single trash mob? If the battle is initiated while her technique is active, her first action will immediately lead to spectral transmigration state. Considering her damage while in this state, she can definitely one-shot one or two trash mobs. Even if she fails to kill anything for some reason, Taking one hit is enough to max the meter. As a destruction character, as long as the team doesn't have preservation, she'll have the highest chance of getting hit. Although relying on it without taunt buff might be difficult if the enemy's attacks are single target. But now we have characters that grant taunt buff to others, so pairing Jingliu with them seems effective. When taking hit taken into calculation, this seemingly brick rotation is no longer a brick. The second potential issue I keep hearing is about her ability to consume teammates' HP every time she attacks while in spectral transmigration state. Well, after seeing the actual number in my dream, I don't think it's an issue at all. She only consumes a fragment of her teammates' HP, so I believe the team will be fine, especially when Jingliu is killing the enemies fast. Now let's talk about her power. In my calculation, I use Ice Set and Rutilant Arena first. I believe Rudolant Arena is her best planner ornament, and as for the relics, there is an alternative I will talk about later. The substat rolls are distributed as follows. There are three light cones used in this calculation. Superimpose one secret vow, superimpose five eon, and superimpose one her signature light cone. And here is the result. As expected, secret vow is the weakest, so I will take it out from further calculations. It only starts beating S5 Eon at Superimpose 3, so if you have S3 or even S5 Secret Vow, feel free to use it instead of Eon. But let's focus on Jingliu's number now. As a comparison, I will show you Imbibitor Luni's number from my past calculation. Using S5 Eons, Imbibitor Luni is around 20% stronger compared to Jingliu. However, when using their respective signature LC, Imbibidor is like 50% stronger, so it's clear that in terms of power level, she is below Imbibidor. Jingliu is closer to Blade's power level. I didn't calculate Blade's number back then, but looking at Grimrose's spreadsheet, within six cycles, he's doing around 10% less damage than Jingliu. This number might not be accurate since Grimro and I use different assumptions. For example, I limit my substat rolls at 10, since from my experience, getting 10 rolls of the same substat is really hard. Meanwhile, I often see Grimro puts 12 substats rolls in his spreadsheet. This will result in different final stats, which will also affect the damage output even though the formula we use is the same. He also assumes three enemies in his AoE calculation, while I assume two enemies only. The small details are different, but this approximate power level should be close enough. Jingliu might not be as strong as Imbibitor Looney, but in terms of skill point efficiency, she's as good as Blade. Jingliu's teams will have so much flexibility in skill point management, unlike Imbibitors who follow a strict rotation and strict team comp. If you ask me, I always prefer a flexible team instead of a strict team. Besides, as I said before, 
Jingliu or Imbibeater both are overkill for the content we have at this moment, so there is no need to go at each other comparing numbers. Okay, so this is the first relic and planar ornament combination. Now I'll tell you the alternative relic set that outperforms this ice set in the right situation. For the second combination, I use Quantum Set and Rudolent Arena. I did two scenarios here. One is Partial Shred, which means the enemy isn't weak to Quantum, so only one Def Shred applies. The other scenario is when the enemy is weak to Quantum and both Def Shred apply. The result is as follows. Apparently, Quantum Set beats the Ice Set in full shred calculation if she uses her signature Light Cone. Meanwhile, Eons with Ice Set still beats Quantum Set even at full shred. This is talking about her damage at solo, by the way. But let's make it a bit more interesting. I will bring a character that will most likely accompany her in battle, Pella. With the help of Pella's ultimate now Quantum Set beats Ice Set at full shred situation regardless of the Light Cone she uses, in my opinion, this alternative is worth considering. When you face an enemy who is weak to ice and quantum, might as well give her a quantum set, then bring Pella as well. Long story short, Jingliu is a good DPS that will fulfill all your needs to beat this game. The only con I can think of if I really, really want to nitpick is her playstyle. She is kind of boring in my opinion. The spectral transmigration might feel unique at first, but if you look closely, it's just Blade's gimmick with extra steps. She's not a character that players need to make decisions to unleash a secret tech. Her rotation is very straightforward. But other than that, I'm actually glad she's not as strong as Imbibitor Looney. Imbibitor was so strong for no reason which will make the game not healthy if future characters are as strong, if not stronger than him. But at least with Jingliu, there will be no power creep for the next two weeks. We'll see what happens with Topaz.